Michael, there's a great study about just the importance of listening and empathy in our romantic relationships. Yeah, and this was done by uh, Davis and Othout in uh, 1987. So this is a little bit aged, but it's still very much up to date. It's called Maintenance of Satisfaction in Romantic Relationships, Empathy and Relational Competence. And they interviewed heterosexual romantic couples. And what they found was that empathy, so active listening is a core part of being empathetic, was positively associated with satisfaction in romantic relationships. So now we need to maybe talk just very briefly about what empathy is for those that are shaking their head and scratching their chin. It's like, what are they talking about? So empathy, in a nutshell, is your ability to understand and share the feelings of others. And that increases the connection in a relationship. And I'm going to argue that this is not only true for romantic relationships. This is just the part where the rubber really hits the road because now you're married to someone. Now you have kids with someone. So those relationships are really important. But empathy and active listening also kicks in uh, in fostering those social relationships, the friends, the dates, the coworkers. Um, because by being empathetic, you show that you are attuned to the other person's needs. And that is important for trust because if, if I'm talking with Johnny and I don't feel like he understands my needs, I don't feel he understands where what I'm talking about, why I feel this way, what is the likelihood that I'm going to trust Johnny? Right. But, or I talk to Johnny and when I talk about a struggle or when I talk about a victory, Johnny is there to support, to high five me on a victory and to, you know, lend an, lend an ear and a shoulder when I talk about a struggle. It's like, okay, this person gets me. I've just met him. I've just talked to him for two minutes, but this person gets me. Why? Because we're showing empathy. And, and again, it's not about what is it that we're going to say to remedy this. It's what are the actions that we're going to do that will convey that actions are always going to speak louder than words. And this is where a lot of uh, analytical mindsets get you in trouble because you're looking now for the right answer for what has just been said when if if it's empathy it is how you're conveying that empathy through your body language through nonverbal communication now these three areas your sense of humor your ability to actively listen showcase empathy and your storytelling are skills that you can build so if you think right now I'm boring. I don't have much personality outside of my work. I don't have much going on in my life. How do I stand out? How do I become extraordinary? Well, you work on these three areas to build out that exciting, fun personality. And I'm going to let you in on a secret. Chat GPT, Google Bard, they can't do this for you. They're not going to solve this personality issue in your dating life. But you know what will? You, chasing after a passion, Working on these areas and creating environments for you to practice these skills, which is why we have implementation sessions in the X Factor Accelerator, working on these exact three things, your listening, your storytelling, and your ability to showcase your sense of humor. And when those three in combination come together, you become charismatic, you become memorable, and that first date turns into a second date, and it turns into her being excited to tell her friends at brunch about meeting you and connecting with you, and having an opportunity to see you again. Now, the second factor that we're going to talk about here, confidence, right? The first step to unlocking your X factor with dating is to grow your charisma, become someone who can showcase personality effortlessly. Your second step is actually overcoming that inner critic and building confidence in yourself, not only to speak your mind, but to take action in areas that are attractive, to actually move that relationship forward from just a first date or a great conversation or some flirty text messaging to someone who is action oriented and is liberated from their inner critic to showcase themselves, to find their voice and communicate who they are with the opposite sex. So AJ, this is something really interesting that we see every time when we do our implementation workshop on vulnerability, where everyone just shares a little bit as much as they're comfortable doing. And this 90-minute workshop, when we're done, no one wants to leave. 
because they're like, hey, we opened up this. I want to hear more about that. I want to hear more about that. And, and the participants are like, but I, I shared something that I'm a little bit embarrassed about. I'm shared, I shared something that my inner critic was speaking up about. But by doing exactly that and showing that human part, everyone else is like, no, I, I want to hear more about that. Tell me more about that trip. I, I really want to hear how, how, how this played out. And it's, it's amazing to see how conversations just keep rolling and no one's asking, what's the next thing I should say? What's the next question I should ask? Like the moment this vulnerability enters the, the playing field, the conversation just goes. Mm -hmm. 